Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I wanted to go ahead and give my review over The Real Housewives of Potomac. I'm really, like, kind of tired, um, but we're going to push through this review. So this is probably going to be more of, like, a conversation. I mean, I'll try to cover, of course, all the important parts or, you know, try to go over as much as I can remember, because um, I really didn't take, like, really, really thorough notes, um, but... You know, hopefully it's enough to make me remember. All right. So, um, the episode starts off where it left off. Um, you know, Candace and Mia were arguing because Candace had told Mia that if your mother relapsed, that's not on me. That's on you. You're the one who decided to bring your mother on this show and parade her around for a storyline, which is absolutely the truth. Um, they go back and forth. Mia threatens Candace in front of her co-workers who she has known since season three and most importantly also her boss Andy Cohen um I think it's very strange that well actually it's not strange it's right it's, it's actually it's actually very consistent with this cast um I think it's very um it's consistent <laughs> okay but me uh Karen, <laughs> okay, Karen decided to ask Candace, are you stepping, I just want, I just don't want you to be stepping out in the streets talking to people like that, baby, are you stepping out in the streets calling people whores from Columbia University or Howard University or University of Houston, are you out calling women and telling women that they have fiery boxes? Is Giselle going out in the streets telling people about rumors that she heard but don't believe them? Is Robin going out in the streets and going to people's jobs and putting her finger in folks' faces? See, this is the problem, right? And this is what it's going to be for me. There is no one on that stage that can try and preach to Candace about the things that she has said because the truth is y'all have said things that are way worse. Y'all have done things that are way worse. Robin even had the nerve to spread open her lips and ask Candace, do you think that you take things a step further than others? Sweetie, you're the one who went to Ashley's job, her place of business and put your finger in her face. You're the one who stepped into Monique's face last year. You're the one who threatened Katie, I think at the season one reunion, I think when Katie called you and Giselle dumb and dumber. <laughs> Do you take things a step too far? far? Do you, Robin? Do you? Because out of everybody in this in this building right now, you are the one who's the most physical girl. So while the viewer is asking me, do I need anger management, sweetie? You need to be answering that question. Um, I think I figured it out when it comes to Candace and this whole accountability thing. Candace is very aware of what she says. And she said, I was like, that's what it is. That's what it is. Y'all, and this is for the majority of the people that hate Candace and also the people on the cast. Y'all want Candace to apologize and she's not apologizing. So because she's not apologizing, you're then saying that she's not being held accountable. But Candace is telling you, I'm very aware of what I'm saying. Like the last episode when Giselle tried to tell her, it's just like something comes over you and you just black out. She was like, no, I'm still there. But y'all need to be aware of what you are saying. And that's where it goes for me. Bitch, you can't tell me shit. Not one person on this stage. Y'all all have done way worse things than me. Girl, the truth, and this is just the truth. Baby, it was season six. 
episode 12, where Candace Dillon said, yo mama. Now, mind you, we have a 17 episode season. And it wasn't until season 12 where Candace Dillard Bassett said, yo mama, and it set the world into a frenzy. Baby, the season is almost done. It's over. We on episode 12. We had 17 episodes. And it, y'all, it's like it's like the people were sitting there waiting, rocking back and forth, just for Candace to say or do something. Oh, we got it. She said your mama, and they ain't they, they done hung on it. They done hung on hung on it ever since. Girl, so she said your mama. Okay, girl, the shit that y'all done said. No, no one. Not big sisters or nothing. No one is going on this stage is going to tell me. Now, Andy, you might because you're the boss. But none of these bitches are going to tell me shit about shit. Until you can take, until you can take accountability for the shit that you say. Because let's just be very clear. I'm aware of what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. Karen, you are the one, the very first episode, tried to blame it on editing. And Andy had to check you. Okay, 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 okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's not taking accountability, sweetie. Mia blaming those tweets on her social media manager. That's not taking accountability, sweetie. I'm taking accountability for what I said. I said what I said. I'm aware of what I said. Y'all just want me to take it back. And I was sitting here thinking too. Remember season, well, some of y'all don't know because some of y'all just started watching last week. And some of y'all only watch the clips online and read the comments. And, that, and that, may, that gives you your opinion. You know, some of us think by ourselves. But anyway, so, you know, remember that, remember it was season four, I believe. Remember that was after the whole, when Candace and uh, Giselle had gotten to it online. And Giselle wanted Candace to apologize. And Candace was really on some, girl, you said what you said. I said what I said. Girl, let's just move on. And I think that's what it is. Like Ashley's whole thing with the whole overseer comment, right? And I think that's a great example of Candace being able to stick her landing, right? Because what happened was Ashley had tagged Chris online, which is Candace's husband. And she was telling them Basically, Miss Dorothy needs to cut the umbilical cord. Basically saying your mama, your, your, your mother-in-law taking care of you and your wife. And then Candace came back and called Michael an overseer. And Ashley took that because if you listen to Ashley, Ashley wasn't even talking about what was said in the, in the restaurant. Robin was the one who said, well, you said in the restaurant... And Ashley was saying, you wrote it, you wrote it, just take accountability for it. She's talking about that tweet. Candace didn't call you a slave. She didn't call you a slave. She said that Michael was an overseer. Now, girl, that's left open to interpretation, right? And I think that's what Wendy means that Ashley, I mean, that Candace Ashley actually can stick it and land it. Because if you really think about the tweets, her and Candace, they... Her and Ashley both said the same thing to each other. Ashley literally told Candace, Chris, because that's who she added, about um, Dorothy taking care of her and Candace. And then Candace came back and was like, basically, bitch, you're overseer. So now that put, that put Ashley in a frenzy. But y'all both said the same thing to each other. It's just that Candace, Candace just stung more. So yeah, I think the whole accountability thing is some bullshit. I think that Candace does take accountability. I just think I want her to, want her to apologize. And because she's not apologizing, then that means that she's not being held accountable. But she's telling you, if you listen to what she's saying, she's telling you, I'm very aware of what I'm saying. I'm aware. I didn't black out. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> I know what I said. Right? 
Now, the person who y'all don't hold accountable is Mia. Mia literally slid through this whole reunion, bitch, unscathed. Part, well, part two. You know, the dry hair comment. Now, I will say this much. I don't really think too much about it when Ashley said to dry a call Candace's hair dry. But I mean, a good question would be, well, Ashley, why would you assume that Candace's hair is dry? Because every time we seen the bitch, she got on wigs. So why would you think her hair is dry? I guess unless you're talking about the pieces that you saw when she wore braids, maybe. But it is what it is because Candace told her she was wild body, which Candace... I think you're full of shit on that one. Not because it was body shaming, because people don't care about body shaming. They don't. Like I said in one of my videos, next week, they're going to be calling Lizzo a fat bitch. Right? We don't care about body shaming. They just care that Candace did it. And just like Candace said, I don't care about her just having a baby. I don't care. Body shaming, and I'm saying this, body shaming is body shaming. You don't get to pick and choose how hurtful it may be. You don't get to sit here and say that we can body shame somebody like Lizzo because, I mean, she fat. The bitch been fat her whole life. Like, it's not going to hurt. But then because somebody had a baby, that's where we draw the line. If you're against body shaming, you're against body shaming, period. Um... But yeah, I thought she was full of shit. Like, Candace, girl, you did that to body shame her. Like, if no, it's no if ands, buts about it. Like, girl, I don't care what you say. Girl, you did it because you wanted to body shame her, which is fine. Because, girl, at the end of the day, girl, y'all don't even fuck with each other like that. Well, girl, I don't know what y'all do now. Because y'all all in L.A. taking pictures together. But, girl, once upon a time, not long ago, girl, y'all don't even fool with each other like that. So it was what it was. You know, Giselle has this whole thing about Candace... Um, responding to everything. She actually doesn't because quiet as this kept me and a lot of other people who actually like Candace been want Candace to respond to you bitch and she hasn't. So clearly she don't respond to everything. She should have been and got she should have been got into Karen's ass a long time ago. That burning hell shit that was petty. That was childish. That was child's play. She low she she low key should have gotten to Robin's ass too. Like I said the only person that Candace has really just gotten into it with is Ashley. She has never had the, the amount of smoke that she has for Ashley. She does not have for everybody else. And the time that she has had conflict with the other ladies is because the ladies started with her first. Ever since Candace came into this group and they found out she came from a little bit of money and they found out that her mom was still paying her bills, they never had respect for Candace, which caused them to pick on Candace, which then caused Candace to baby do all the Things, the things of the things of the things, right? <laughs> but people forget that they actually started with Candace when they when they when she got on the show. But anyways, girl, um, they say it drags on, it goes too far. Um, I thought it was funny when the scholar said, girl, I'm not the IRS. I don't need to know how much you make, girl. Uh, girl, scholar was out now. I'm not going to lie. I holler with me and say, y'all brought this girl out here. <laughs> when me and say, y'all brought this girl all the way out here for two sentences. <laughs> I know no, that's right. Because, girl, literally, a scholar was there just for a couple of moments. And it was gone. Um... Andy says basically about Candace and Mia, basically they're not going to resolve that today. Y'all heard when Candace said, no, we good. <laughs> like, there's nothing else to talk about. I said what I said. She said what she said and we good. Um, they take a break. Wendy goes to check on Candace. Um, she tells Candace, I got your back. I can't tell, bitch, because let me tell you something. Why, Wendy, you probably said one or two things to back up Candace. You didn't say enough. Girl, Candace was literally on that stage by herself. <laughs> Everything she told them, they had something to say. Like, it's weird as hell to me how Karen and Giselle old asses can get on this stage and try to convince the viewers that what they say is not that deep and that serious, which I think we need to start saying, okay, this shit is make-believe and it's fake as fuck. 
Because if Karen can get on TV and say that you have a lumpy, bumped up, leaking pussy, a hot box, which means you have an STD, can say that you're a whore from Hampton University, call you what, a drug addict or something what she was saying, and then all of a sudden, y'all try to convince Candace and everybody else that's not cutting to the white meat. You literally just got on TV and someone who y'all say y'all are friends and told the world that your friend has an STD. And that was the first fucking episode. The first episode. That whole hug between Karen and Giselle was fake as hell. I don't care what nobody say. You're not going to get me to believe that Giselle, out of all the things that have happened on this show, that the thing that sent Giselle into this emotional girl world spin is the fact that Karen brought a gift. Because first of all, Karen wasn't the only one that brought a gift. A scholar, I think... Candace brought something. I know um, Wendy brought something, but the fact she brought a gift and spoke to your children, that's what makes it emotional. Girl, I'm not buying it. I'm calling bullshit. I think it's fake as fuck. Giselle, you are not that goddamn emotional that this woman gave your children a hug and brought you a gift that she brought every other bitch sitting on the couch. I think that Giselle was playing games because the girl, the girl sitting here calling you a vampire and you ain't got no emotions. And girl, this is your time to try to show the girls, look, I can cry. I can cry. I, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Again, either, either they're going to have to admit that what they're doing is just for TV they're going to either have to admit that they are some colorist because there ain't no way in hell that all the shit that I've seen these hoes do on Potomac, that all of a sudden, Candace and Wendy. Now, let's get into this colorist stuff. Now, I'm going to be done with it. Ashley can sit at a table and do all of this. Remember when they were at the crowd when her and Candace got into it? Like, I think it was towards the end of the episode, the season. She was doing all this. Didn't nobody call her aggressive. Robin went into Ashley's restaurant and put her finger in Ashley's face. She got into Monique's face. She threatened Katie. I don't remember anybody calling her aggressive. Right? There are things that have, ha that have happened on this show that are just plain out colorist. I, for the life of me, do not understand how black people can be so quick to call out racism, especially when it happens between a black person and a white person. But as soon as something like colorism happens within the community, motherfuckers go deaf, dumb, and blind. I just don't get it. I honestly don't understand it. Was the hair thing a reach for Candace? I could see how some people could say that was probably a reach. But for the most part, you're not going to get me to believe someone like Karen who said that Wendy doesn't fit the aesthetic of the group. Sweetie, you barely fit it if you want to be honest about it. Because the truth of the matter is, Wendy's resume, Wendy actually is too fucking accomplished to even be with y'all. If you want to just, if you want to be on some real just shit, put Wendy's resume against any bitch in that motherfucking building that's who's going to come out on top. I dare you to. I dare you to. She doesn't fit the aesthetic though. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's definitely colorism on this show. We're not going to pretend that it isn't. 
the way that they hold Candace accountable or want to hold want to hold Candace feet to the fire for things that she has said and done. But when other people do what she does or maybe 10 times worse, girl, they don't say anything. The simple fact that Giselle can sit her ass up on stage and have a fit last year about Monique and bring bodyguards and bodyguards to the reunion. But as soon as Mia threatens her castmate from season three, bitch, you ain't said shit. But it's a, but Candace is the one that's in the wrong. And this bitch really didn't get shit popping until episode 12. Come on, y'all. Come on. I'm not playing this game. I'm not playing it. Y'all say it's not colorism. All right. Um, Ashley and Michael. Girl, when Ashley's, girl, when Ashley's okay. When Ashley's okay, I need that Bob to stop weaving. <laughs> that took on my soul. Um, bitch, when, Ken, when, when, the call, when the caller asks Ashley, I mean, when, the, when somebody asks Candace, was she jealous of, was she jealous of Ashley becoming a mom before her? When Candace, baby, when I tell y'all, I holler. Candace said, yes, I'm so jealous of her becoming a mom before me. Bitch, when I tell you, bitch. I'm I'm so jealous of her come about becoming a mom before me. And then and then Ashley said, "You're gonna feel you're gonna she's gonna be humble when she has children." She said, "I'm not. I said what I said. Let's move on." <laughs> what what did she say? Um, no, I won't get over it. She said, "No, I won't get over it." Um, the fact that they were trying to convince Candace. That at, listen, let me just say that that whole statement shit, it is what it is. But y'all, again, like it's bullshit. Like I guarantee you, if anybody, I don't know, girl, that shit is crazy. It's crazy. The whole shit is just crazy. Like nobody understands why Candace is upset that somebody called her video shoot her video uh, low budget. Then they try and twist themselves in pretzels, trying to say that Mia meant that that she meant it was low budget as far as the budget was low, as you know, the money put towards the video. But I guarantee you, if somebody talks about every hue beauty that doesn't exist or Ladon, Karen would have a fucking fit. Nobody wants anybody coming after their shit. And that's just put that's just as simple as I can put it. Um Um. Oh, the statement. I don't understand why people don't understand that, girl. Like, if I, if me and you, if you and I were working on a friendship and you used that moment, you used, I'm thinking we're cool. And instead of you going to say, I want to write something that could possibly show Monique in a positive light about her being a great mother and a great businesswoman. You didn't do that. Ashley wrote a statement on what happened in season five. And I'm sure, I mean, season four, and I'm sure she didn't include everything. Ashley, I want to know, Miss Ashley Darby, when you wrote that statement for Monique, did you include in the statement how you provoked Candace? You know, the girls like to say that, P that Candace provoked them. Did you include in the statement that you provoked Candace in her, in, her, in her home? Did you include in the statement that after the butter knife was thrown to the floor, you had to look and search for the butter knife? Did you include that after that happened, you were asked to leave her house not once, not twice, I think three times, and each time you re-entered without permission from the owner, which is actually indeed trespassing. Did you include that? I'm sure you didn't. 
So yeah, I understand the statement. If I was Candace, I would never trust that bitch again either because I'm thinking we sitting here cool. I'm laughing, trying to move forward. And girl, you at the motherfucking police station writing statements. Nobody else got involved. And it's so crazy how the only bitch that wasn't even at the goddamn table was the one who was running to the courthouse, Ashley. Everybody else there who actually saw the shit face, front row seats didn't get involved. But guess who got involved? Ashley Darby. Um, Wendy's plastic surgery. I love the fact that Wendy actually told the girls to basically be careful and do your research. And girl, basically stop t stop taking your asses across the water to get work done. And get work done and you die on the table. That's basically what she was saying. Um, Wendy and her body changing. I mean, Wendy and her body and her changing. Wendy, I don't know, like, that's what I'm saying. They try to make Wendy sound like some crazy person. Like, when Wendy got on the show last year, she had just had a baby, right? I ain't never had no baby, <laughs> okay? I ain't never had no baby. But I would assume that after someone has had their body stretched to the max and a person has come out of them, that they may not feel their sexiest or the prettiest are, you know, at their best, you know? Now you have extra weight, extra skin, you know what I'm saying? That you probably didn't have before. And so for them to act like they don't understand, girl, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not about to do this. Girl, at the end of the goddamn day, Wendy got her ass done and Wendy got her titties done. It ain't a motherfucker walking around here who if they got their ass done, they won't be doing the same thing. I don't know not now, bitch, who went and got some titties that ain't showing them off. Hell, I don't even know a nigga who done went and got lipo or got their ass done and all of a sudden, girl, they ain't wearing skinny jeans. Ain't nobody getting their body done and dressing the same. Ain't nobody losing weight and dressing the same. Right? You got Lizzo, one of the only girls who probably walking around here dressing how she want to dress. The other girls wait till they get 105 pounds. <laughs> um, Wendy and her rehearse reads. Wendy let the girls know, girl, God, girl, this is what I do for a living. I don't need to rehearse nothing. Girl, pretty much. If I can get these hoes together on TV, you don't think I can get these group of women together? Period. Now, girl, I did think the, the reads was rehearsed, but, girl, once you put it that way, I said, okay, girl. Um, I did. I remember, and I actually, as much as people ha think that I actually hate, hate Karen, Karen just gets on my fucking nerves. Um, but I don't hate Karen. I don't even dislike Karen. She just irks my nerves. But I even retweeted um, on my Twitter page. Uh, Karen did say that she was coming out, and they played the clip on the show like three years ago about she was coming out with a, a candle. So it wasn't just because Wendy did it. And I actually saw that again, like I think like a month and a half, a month and a half ago, and I retweeted it on my uh, Twitter page. Um, uh, can, uh, Wendy announces that she's coming out with a five and seven with candle. Maybe she threw that dress back and crossed them legs. Girl, Andy stood up and threw the cards down and said, what he said, checkmate. Um, the Eddie rumors. Um, Giselle is full of shit again. Giselle's just full of shit. Giselle is full of shit. I ain't never seen somebody contradict themselves so much like Giselle. Like in real life, and I keep saying this, girl, just last year you had bodyguards. This year you telling Candace and Mel Clark you it was okay. But then you will turn around again and tell Candace, well, me and Ka Karen have never gotten into a physical altercation. I think that was Candace's point the first fucking episode. That girl, this is this, that that's his, that's exactly how this is supposed to work. The way this thing works, Giselle, is that we are we should be able to get into verbal arguments, right? Verbal spars, verbal fights, and everybody remain calm, cool, and collective. Because even when Wendy was gonna drag your ass, she had enough control to get up. Remove herself from the situation. Go into the bathroom, reapply some lipstick, and then come back and read your ass again. But she didn't touch you. So, Giselle, um, I didn't believe the rumors. Nobody believed the rumors. I was trying to look out for her. Um, I wanted to check on her to make sure she... Girl, no, you're, you're lying. 
You didn't give a fuck about your AKA sister. You mentioned it on the show at least four or five times. And then you sent Ashley. Let's just keep it all the way 100. You sent Ashley to, 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 to do the dirt. That's the only reason why Ashley even came to Williamsburg. I'm starting to get loud. See, I've been cool, calm, and collected this whole time. You had a whole Tommy tuck. You had a whole Tommy tuck. Did that keep Jamal? And then they went off. All right, y'all. That's it. I'm over these hoes. Honestly, like I said, girl, I do. Th I definitely think it's bits of colorism. Um, this show. This show is. I have. To, I, I have to remind myself that this is a produced reality show. This is a produced reality show. This is a produced reality show. <laughs> and that's what it is. At this point, girl, these bitches talk crazy to each other. Only I, the, I, I think my whole thing has been this entire time, if you've been listening to me, is Candace says fucked up shit, right? But also in Candace's defense, she don't ever start shit. But if you're going to call out Candace, then this, there's no way you can just ca not call out everybody else. And it has nothing to do with being childish or... But the truth is, you're not going to say shit to me. Ain't no way you're going to come up to me and be like, well, Rodney, you shouldn't have said this, you shouldn't have said this. And I'm looking like, well, bitch, as childish as it may be in a response, well, bitch, you didn't say nothing to these raggedy ass hoes. When I'm talking to you, well, bitch, don't talk to me. Go talk to them first, and then you come and talk to me. You see what I'm saying? Like, y'all want to ignore what the other girls have done. Which that also goes into the whole colorism thing. Because the light-skinned girls, I don't see any type of smoke for none of them. But Candace can come in episode season 6, episode 12, and say your mama, and girl, y'all swear up and down the world just came to an end. But Karen can tell Giselle, but because they're friends, that makes it okay? What type of fucking weird-ass friendship do you have when you will get on TV and say that your friend's pussy is leaking? and she has an STD and calls her a whore from Hampton University and talks about her relationship not being real, even though it wasn't? Well, what type of friend would do that? That's some weird ass. That ain't no fucking friend of me. That ain't no shit that somebody should aspire to have. Y'all got some weird ass. Y'all have some weird ass qualifications and requirements for friendships. We need to be. It's one thing for you and your friend to just throw like light shade at each other. Girl, me and my sister throw light shade at each other. All like last night, he was like, "Girl, I don't think <laughs> I don't think I'm going. I'm about to uh, I'm about to uh, Uber uh, order me some chicken." I said, "Well, girl, you enjoy your eight piece chicken." <laughs> Girl, I'm not getting on her talking about, girl, you got an STD, your pussy leaking, bitch. You a hoe from, you a hoe from Hampton University. Girl, that girl, with, this girl where is your man at? Where, where is Jamal? Girl, this shit is weird. And y'all, y'all eat that shit up. And I'm sitting back looking like, the fuck am I looking at? They hug, they love each other, they real friends. That is not a real friendship. Them hoes can't stand each other. And if that's what a real friendship looks like to y'all, then I feel sorry for y'all friends, sweetie. I'm gone on that note. Bye.